Um, so Cambridge Labour Environment Forum, very briefly, um, is made up of people in the local Labour Party who take a particular interest in the environment and wildlife issues. We're involved in campaigns to cut the use of insecticides, rewild verges, and protect green spaces. It was our original idea to invite Virgil Sharkey to speak two months ago, and we found various other groups wanting to join us. And this is how Friends of the River Cam came about as a very loose alliance. As part of that, we uh, pledged to be non-political and um, also unfunded to avoid um, compromise of any kind. So I've been asked by the friends just to give a brief kind of overview of what's happened um, since we had that talk with Fergal Sharkey. It created a lot of interest um, and debate with policymakers such as local MPs, mayoral candidates and council leaders. The local media has run a swathe of news and features on the state of the CAM and its precious chalk strings. We wanted the meeting to increase pressure on policymakers and the water companies to explain how massive new housing developments and therefore water customers can be accommodated in an area where streams and rivers are already badly polluted and run dry. We continue to hold the view that new schemes should not proceed until clean water can be guaranteed and chalk streams return to their pristine state. Cambridge Water, one of the local water companies, is spending £21,000 funding eight projects to protect chalk streams and encourage biodiversity. That's good, but it's nothing like what's needed. We understand that other groups may want to do individual projects with the Environment Agency that is the formal regulator of these water companies or water companies themselves. But Friends of the River Cam wants to concentrate on the wider picture. It's convinced that there needs to be a wholesale reassessment of water use and the responsibility that's needed for this. It's up to Anglian Water, Cambridge Water and the regulator Environment Agency to go back to the drawing board to ensure that safeguarding the environment comes before the profits that are withdrawn. This can only be done by a wholesale reduction in water use and an end to the continuing pollution from agricultural runoff and sewage. One immediate starting point would be for the Environment Agency to give a cast iron guarantee that water quality is good enough for bathing. There is in fact, very recently, a new proposal for one small area of the CAM around an area called Sheep's Green to be made safe. But we believe this area should include the whole of the river from Byron's Pool to Bates Lock extraordinary to me that the Environment Agency will not guarantee currently that any inland water is clean enough for human bathing, although it has just agreed to do this for the first time with a stretch of the River Cam in Ilkley, West Yorkshire, by chance the place where I was um, born. Oxford is now pushing for this and we will too. I'm one of thousands of Cam River swimmers there are many others on this call. We have no idea what the quality of water that we're dipping our heads into. That really is not good enough. Another step forward recently since we had the last meeting is that the City Council and Cambridge Water have just published a review on the state of the river. They asked two outside bodies, the Wildlife Trust and Wild Trout Trust, to have a look at the state of the water system. The report came out last month and you can find it on the Cambridge City Council website on the chalk streams. But it makes devastating reading because 19 out of 20 chalk streams are in red or amber condition. That means a very poor state. Many tributaries are completely run dry. It's only really confirming what we heard and saw in the slide presented by Phil Sharkey two months ago, but no one can now pretend that we don't know what the state of play is. Frustratingly in the report, there's very little analysis in an otherwise excellent document into what's gone wrong, with only cursory glances to the impacts of climate crisis and the wider growth agenda in this area. The report suggests a host of small remedial work that could be done that sidesteps the basic problem of over abstraction and the growing demands of more water through new developments. They claim that this has been beyond their remit. 
We argue that another document is needed into how they're going to tackle the underlying causes. What there is also these days is talk of doubling nature and the creation of river corridors in this area. It sounds good, but we do have fears that it's going to be used by government, developers and others as a way to mitigate rather than halt the devastating impact on nature and wildlife of building 1.5 million new homes plus huge transport networks via the proposed Oxcam Arc. We're also concerned that business lobby groups may try to co-opt environmental groups to support their agendas by providing money for projects or by becoming individually active in them. This makes it difficult for the public to know who to trust. Certainly Friends of the River Cam is an organization that wants to protect nature, but also to ensure that human justice is achieved. We do support economic growth, but we want that growth inside planetary and truly sustainable boundaries. We do not think this is happening in the general Cambridge area. And all this talk from government about leveling up the country, there are two cities in Cambridgeshire, one suffering from too much growth, which is Cambridge, and a second too little, which is Peterborough. Surely it is more equitable to help a city recently dubbed the worst in Britain, rather than piling pressure on one considered, luckily for us, to be the most desirable. The evidence of the last 10 years shows that 6% annual economic growth has left Cambridge exhausted. The roads are log jammed, house prices rampant, and green spaces reduced or damaged. Cambridge is also claimed to be the most unequal city in Britain in terms of income. Such a gap between rich and poor is destructive to communities and social cohesion. Why should we want more of this? What all, about all this is lofty government claims of building that better post-pandemic. Um, post Certainly everyone has commented on how nature, rivers, green spaces more than ever, we need to junk old ways of thinking and ensure communities are built around clean water and clean air. We literally need to take a breather on the pursuit of growth for the sake of it. COVID may yet permanently change work patterns, so there is less need to drive, live so close to one's place of work and engage in massive housing projects which are driven by money, not affordable housing. And yet a further 4,500 homes were given the go-ahead in Water Beach last week. Even the Tory MP for Cambridge South, Anthony Brown, has described this area as a developer's playground. To give him and City MP Daniel Zeichner their dues, they have still helped set up an all-parliamentary group on chalk streams. But new parks and housing schemes in the region have created more and more water customers and usage, leaving the camp and its tributaries close to exhaustion. You wouldn't believe it if you walk by the river today or the last couple of days when the, the snow has been falling and the water is full and flowing fast. But normally, in the every other average day, it can be like a brown soup. I know, I walk by it every day, as I'm sure many of you do. We know that the water companies are using more and more boreholes and groundwater to keep it alive. We want a huge reduction in water extraction and sewage dumping to allow the world's special chalk streams to recover, especially given the climate emergency that the local councils have called. Global warming will lead to hotter summers, less water resources, and we question claims by water companies that new reservoirs or pipelines can solve this problem. It takes years to develop schemes like that, and we need action now. Why have no new reservoirs been built in the south of England for the last 30 years? Water depletion has been known about in East Anglian and wider southeast region for well over a decade. The time to build resilience into the system was long ago squandered, while dividend payments to shareholders continued to be paid. The Environment Agency should have raised the alarm years ago instead of allowing a clearly unsustainable situation to grow worse. So what else um, have those involved in Friends of the River Cam done over the past two months? We've been creating a website and the link is on the chat, you can see it. 
We have developed petitions, we've drawn up a river charter, which we want supporters, policymakers, and, co and companies to sign up to. We've written open letters, which were printed in the local paper this week alone. Individuals have written their own letters to the press. We would, um, we don't have any money coming into this campaign. It's all run by volunteers. We're not looking for money. We don't want to be compromised in any way, but it does mean that things like developing websites are, are, are slower progress than uh, we would hope for. But there's been enormous enthusiasm, goodwill and momentum um, behind the campaign. And it's fantastic that I see we've even got people um, watching tonight from Akron, Ohio. So obviously the message is, is spreading worldwide. The patron saint of chalk streams, Virgil Shardy continues to use his social media battering ram with skills and wit. Do follow him on Twitter. Please also write to MPs, water company bosses, and the Environment Agency to express your concern and keep coming to our talks. It was truly heartbreaking at the end of the last meeting to hear a school student say that he had never seen the pristine chalk streams shown in one of Virgil's slides. So for the next generation's sake, we owe it to them to stop and do all we can to stop this reckless disregard of the natural environment. I'd like to end by quoting something from the Assembly of First Nations in North America, whose ancestors may have arrived in Canada 14,000 years ago. They know about the importance of living in harmony with, and respect for nature. And they do not see water as a product to be plundered for profit. This is what they say. Water is the most life-sustaining gift on Mother Earth and is the interconnection between all living beings. Water sustains us, flows between us, within us, and replenishes us. Water is the giver of all life, and without clean water, all life will perish. Thank you for listening.